The National Desk, America's News Now. Right now, whistleblower testifies House Republicans intensify their probe into Biden family business dealings, questioning a whistleblower we haven't heard from before alleging foul play. We have facts and new evidence continues to be uncovered by our committee revealing the first family's corruption. The Bidens have put themselves first and Americans last. Then wicked weather, a tornado touches down in North Carolina as flooding hits the Appalachians and southern heat goes off the charts. And the feds take aim at AI, the new investigation into who's at risk as artificial intelligence grows. This is the National Desk, America's News Now. I'm Eugene Ramirez. Right now, the House Oversight Committee is into their fifth hour of a hearing with two IRS whistleblowers alleging preferential treatment and mismanagement by the Justice Department in their investigation into Hunter Biden. But the hearing opened with a claim that goes beyond the first son being involved. Chairman James Comer indicating it involves the Biden family. Biden's then received incremental payments over time to various different bank accounts. These complicated financial transactions were used deliberately to conceal the source of funds and total amounts. No normal business operates like this. What were the Bidens selling? Nothing but influence and access to the Biden network. Now, Democrats on the committee responding, saying that it's just all politics there and refute the idea that the investigation was tainted by President Biden himself or his administration. There's no evidence that President Biden has involved himself in any way in the investigation into his own son, an investigation that's been overseen by Trump's appointed U.S. attorney. Up until a few hours ago, one of the witnesses, Joe Ziegler, was known only as whistleblower X. Now, he says he isn't seeking to place blame, but is calling for accountability and reform at the highest levels of government. National correspondent Christine Frizzau has more on today's hearing. Do you solemnly swear? On Capitol Hill, the lead IRS case agent in the Hunter Biden investigation has now gone public as a whistleblower. Joe Ziegler laying out the argument there's been a, quote, corrosion of ethical standards and abuse of power in the case. It appeared to me, based on what I experienced, that the U.S. attorney in Delaware in our investigation was constantly hamstrung, limited, and marginalized by DOJ officials as well as other U.S. attorneys. A 13-year veteran at the IRS, he'd been assigned to the case for five years, but was taken off it recently after raising red flags for what he saw as preferential treatment of Hunter Biden, including others tipping off his lawyers about a search warrant for a storage unit and not allowing him to interview Joe Biden's adult grandchildren. Despite evidence, he said that Hunter Biden had willfully violated the U.S. tax code, failing to report millions Millions of dollars in earnings, therefore avoiding paying hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes. He also stated there had been unanimous agreement about which charges to recommend, and they included felony counts, which were not eventually brought. The Department of Justice engaged in a campaign to delay, divulge, and deny that investigation, leading to the expiration of the statute of limitations for many of the crimes involved. Democrats pointed out that a lot of the concerns raised by whistleblowers happened before Joe Biden was president under former President Trump's Justice Department and Attorney General Bill Barr. You said that warrants were ready as soon as April 2020 to begin searching for records, but actions weren't taken with regard to those warrants. Again, Joe Biden was not the president in April 2020. Democrats contend this hearing and others like it are a political tool to distract from Donald Trump's legal woes. As Republicans brought in their arguments, the Hunter Biden case is one of several examples of a two-tiered system of justice. In Washington, I'm Christine Frazau. 
We're learning more about the target letter delivered to Donald Trump's attorneys on Sunday night. According to the Wall Street Journal, the special counsel indicated three federal statutes in question related to deprivation of rights, conspiracy to defraud the United States, as well as tampering with a witness. Donald Trump saying he believes he's the target and uh, will be indicted again, maybe as early as tomorrow. But officially, the letter just means that individual is under investigation and that a grand jury has evidence linking that person to a possible crime. While well, in New York, a federal judge denied the former president a retrial of the sexual assault suit he lost to writer E. Jean Carroll. The judge said there was no miscarriage of justice in the verdict. Trump lawyers argued the damages ordered went beyond the facts of the case. Uh, Carroll was awarded $5 million. In a separate lawsuit, Carroll is suing Trump for defamation in a trial set to begin in January. Also in New York today, a federal judge rejecting Donald Trump's attempt to reassign the criminal hush money case to a federal court. That case is moving forward on the state level and is set to begin in Manhattan in the spring. Trump's lawyers can appeal the decision. Hawaii Governor Josh Green declaring a state of emergency this morning as Tropical Storm Calvin passed by the islands of Hawaii, uh, known as, of course, the Big Island there. Calvin brought uh, sustained winds as high as 50 miles per hour and as much as 8 to 10 inches of rain. The storm is expected to weaken as it moves west and will decrease to a depression hopefully by tomorrow. Now, millions of Americans and other states are at risk for severe storms tonight. Damaging winds and hail are forecast across parts of the upper Midwest, central plains, and mid-Atlantic regions. Just this afternoon, a tornado hit Nash County, North Carolina. Check out these images here. It injured at least four people, destroyed homes there, knocked down some trees and cut off power, and even closed a stretch of I-95 for hours. Now, the tornado was on the ground for about an hour, much longer than the typical 20 minutes or less. The Rocky Mountain Pfizer facility was also badly damaged. The governor says state personnel are now moving in to help. The search for two missing children swept away by a flash flood in Pennsylvania was disrupted this morning due to severe weather. Authorities had planned to shift to a dive-based search for two-year-old Maddie Shields and nine-month-old Conrad, her brother, now that they've covered the flood zone more than a dozen times. Crews are watching the area to resume as soon as possible. Rescue efforts continue in southwestern Kentucky after strong storms drenched Graves County with heavy floods early this morning. The governor has declared a state of emergency. No deaths or injuries have been reported at this time. Parts of the state uh, of Kentucky and Illinois and Tennessee and Missouri could see more rain tonight. But the weather system is forecast to move to New England tomorrow and Friday. Now, all of this comes as some areas in Kentucky are still recovering from devastating floods from a year ago. With one year anniversary a week away, the Appalachian Regional Commission announcing two grand to help communities bounce back from the flooding. The National Desk's Gil McClanahan reports. The Regional Commission. Appalachian Regional Commission co-chair Gail Manchin says helping with flood recovery goes along with the mission of the ARC. The ARC is awarding two grants to Appalachian Kentucky's flood-impacted communities. The first grant was $4.4 million to the Perry County Fiscal Court to be used to get people out of flood-prone areas to higher ground, like the Skyview Estates housing development being built on former coal mine property. Now with us being able to announce this uh, before the year anniversary, I think our people are going to see that, that both the federal, the state, and the local partners are committed to giving them an opportunity to stay there and build there and have a safe place to live. The grant is being matched with $4.4 million from the Eastern Kentucky SAFE Fund. That's from that nonpartisan special session we had uh, where the General Assembly appropriated hundreds of millions of dollars for us to invest in infrastructure and help our cities and counties across Kentucky. Fletcher County is getting nearly a million dollars from ARC to help install water and sewer service to a new high ground community. We're working on uh, identifying several different properties in Letcher County uh, for higher, higher ground homes. Judge Executive Terry Adams says Letcher County has made progress in recovery after nearly a year from the devastating floods. It has been a struggle um, since last July, but we are moving forward. Adams says it's going to take one step at a time. That was Gil McClanahan reporting. Around 114 million people in the United States are under heat alerts today in the south, southwest, and southeast as that severe heat wave continues into its 39th day. More than 2,300 heat records have been broken since June 10th, and more than 20 daily high temperatures were broken or tied yesterday, including in Phoenix, where temperatures hit 118 degrees, beating the 115-degree record set in 1989. More records likely to be broken this week. 
Four Texas women testifying today in a hearing over the state's abortion ban. Now, this law allows abortions if the mother's life is at risk, but the women say their medically complicated abortions were denied or delayed because the language is unclear. Now, one woman cried as she described having to carry a non-viable pregnancy and then having to watch her baby die after giving birth. A representative for the state said the plaintiffs, quote, simply do not like Texas's restrictions. The hearing continues tomorrow. The sticky note bandit has struck again. The FBI office in Houston asking for help today uh, to find the man responsible for four bank robberies happening over the past two weeks. The unknown suspect has been searing a, uh, seen wearing a green sweater dressed as a woman with a mask and sunglasses. He's been handing out bank tellers threatening notes and no one has been hurt in any of the robbery attempts. Investigators were at a suspected serial killer, Rex Heuerman's house again today and a storage unit nearby as well, collecting some evidence. Heuerman has been charged in the deaths of three women in Long Island. But police are expanding their search now. They're looking at unsolved cases in Las Vegas and also gathering some evidence in Chester County, South Carolina. Heuerman has owned property in both those places. Senators Kristen Gillibrand uh, and from New York and uh, Missouri Republican Senator Josh Hawley are joining forces now uh, to end stock ownership for all legislative and executive branch members and their immediate family. The two introduced a bipartisan measure that would prohibit trading of individual company stock. It's uh, similar to an existing measure in the House, uh, but the Senate version also bans individual stock trading in blind trusts as well. The Biden administration has suspended funding for the Wuhan Institute of Virology. This, after a months-long review, found it was not compliant with federal safety regulations. Health and Human Services says the National Institute of Health has not given money to the lab since July of 2020. That facility is central to the COVID-19 lab leak theory. Investigators have not reached a conclusion uh, as to where the COVID-19 virus originated. Coming up here on the National Desk, why the federal government is demanding information from the maker of the AI platform ChatGPT. And a new study shedding light on whether the MIND diet lives up to its claim of boosting brain health. And later, a group of Florida Republicans say they have evidence that COVID vaccines are bioweapons. What's in the letter they're thinking of sending the governor? We're back in. Attempting to put an end to the pause in defense nominations, Department of Defense officials meeting with senators on the Armed Services Committee this morning. Senator T uh, Tommy Tuberville of Alabama placed uh, these holds, hoping to change a Department of Defense policy that allows paid leave for service members who need to take some time off for abortion services. Now, after the meeting, uh, committee senators disagreed on the military's policy. And under this policy, taxpayer money will be used to facilitate abortions in the eighth or ninth month of pregnancy. Taxpayer money will be used to pay for travel and to facil facilitate leave for abortions that late in a pregnancy. Um, I, don't think, um, I don't think the American people want this. This policy that's been articulated is uh, necessitated by the fear and confusion attended to the, to the DOPS decision. 
The FTC is zeroing in on artificial intelligence regulations with a focus on custom, uh, consumer protections. Uh, the agency has sent OpenAI, the maker of ChatGPT, a 20-page demand for information, including all complaints that the company has gotten about false or misleading statements put out by ChatGPT. Now, it's also asking what data OpenAI uses and how it protects personal data. I think we'll have greater efficiencies when it comes to AI. I think we can um, actually be able to foster a lot of positives through artificial intelligence. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, you just heard from there. Those remarks coming just as the Senate wrestles with regulations. North Korea has still uh, staying silent on the U.S. soldier believed to be in custody there, or is still staying silent, excuse me. Uh, according to United Nations Command, Private Second Class Travis King uh, crossed into North Korea, quote, willfully and without authorization during a border tour Monday. King was previously in a South Korean prison for two months for assault. He was released July 10th and was supposed to be heading back to the U.S. Uh, King is the first known American detained in the North in almost five years. Now, North Korea did, however, fire ballistic missiles into the sea earlier today, a day after the U.S. docked a nuclear sub in South Korea for the first time since the 1980s. South Korea's military says the missiles landed in the Sea of Japan after flying about 341 miles. North Korea has launched roughly 100 missiles since the start of 2022. School choice using taxpayer dollars to fund private school uh, is an issue that is spurring some to swap political parties. National correspondent Kayla Gaskins joins us now from Washington with more. For Georgia State Representative Misha Maynard, switching parties from Democrat to Republican was a tough decision. I've been a Democrat my entire life. When I made the announcement, no one in my family knew. Maynard says she's butted heads with Democrats for years over issues like funding the police, public safety, and education. In my district, there are schools where 3% of the kids can read. 2% are meeting math proficiency. Particularly her support for school choice. How do you think school choice will improve the education system in Georgia? The charter schools are outperforming the public schools. So when there's competition in the market, it forces people um, to do better. Laws expanding school choice passed in 10 Republican-led states this year alone. A new poll published by Real Clear Opinion Research showing 71% of registered voters support school choice. And that 71% number is a seven-point increase from 2020. So that just goes to show that especially after schools were closed for months, if not, you know, over a year, parents are looking for alternative options. Critics say school choice options like vouchers and tax breaks funnel funding away from public schools. In Maynard's district of Atlanta, the city allocates $17,500 per student per year. Their budget last year was $1.5 billion. With $1.5 billion, 97% of the students can't read. Maynard says when it comes to education, the Democratic Party is the one that changed. The old Democrat Party, education was the value. That was the way out of um, the Jim Crow era. Republican candidates emphasizing education ahead of next year's race as new polling shows half their voter base considers K-12 through education a big problem. In Washington, I'm Kayla Gaskins. The Biden administration is taking some steps to help small businesses lower costs and lower costs for Americans. Uh, they announced this new initiative to crack down on food price gouging and new measures to target rental housing fees that are higher than necessary. The administration also focusing now on promoting competition among businesses. The Justice Department and Federal Trade Commission released some draft updates to the country's guidelines on mergers. Now, this could significantly change how the government responds to deals that could harm competition. The updates also target tech companies with large online platforms. A large four alarm fire broke out at an abandoned Kmart in northeast Portland, Oregon. Today, you see all the smoke it caused there. It uh, took a few hours and 38 units to get that warehouse fire under control. Uh, it threatened some local apartments nearby. Uh, Portland Fire and Rescue said that there are homeless encampments inside the building. No injuries have been reported. The used car dealer Carvana says it's reached a debt restructuring agreement with most of its bondholders as it tries to regain some financial stability. The company did well during the pandemic when car demand surged, but has struggled recently. The new agreement aims to lower interest payments for at least the next two years. A new study shows the MIND diet may not provide the mind-body benefit previously thought. But this one study where you may want to go beyond the headline here, medical reporter Liz Bonus explains why. 
Hey there, hello to you. The Mind Diet, loaded with foods that contain certain vitamins, carotenoids, flavonoids, all in these foods right here to help the mind stay strong. Now this new study, however, raising questions about how long you need to eat this way to get these brain benefits. It's all because while the brains of those following the MIND diet did show improvement in markers for memory and brain function in this three-year trial, so did the brains of those not following the MIND diet in the control group. The control group was told to eat as they had always eaten. They were compared to those who ate as the MIND diet suggests, which includes seafood, vegetables, berries, nuts and seeds, olive oil, whole grains, and beans. While all of these foods are good for blood pressure numbers known to lower brain risks. 130 over 80, less than 130 over 80. Whether it's just untreated, that's what it, what it should be, or if you are on treatment, that's what it should be. Researchers in this study just released in this week's New England Journal of Medicine found in just three years, those who ate the MIND diet did not show statistically significant improvement in mind-body benefit to say it works compared to the control group. But here's a few things to remember about what they did find. Eating the MIND diet way improves the quality of your diet for good health. The control group, it appeared, also made healthy changes just knowing they were in a diet study. And finally, previous studies have shown it may take 10 to 15 years to show measurable mind improvement. Three years is not enough. Just so you know, a few foods they suggest you reduce on this diet include sweets, red meat, cheese, and fried foods. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Back to you. Coming up here on the National Desk, a group of Republicans in Florida say they have evidence that COVID vaccines are bioweapons. What's in the letter they're considering sending to officials? Taking the pulse of America, starting with an update on the surfboard stealing sea otter in California. Otter 841 remains on the loose in Santa Cruz, escaping from California Department of Fish and Wildlife when they try to capture her. Photographer Mark Woodward caught one of those unsuccessful attempts on camera. He says it is pretty funny, but at the same time, it is a serious matter. He learned wildlife officials do believe something could be wrong with her. Last Wednesday, reporter Rich Rodriguez told you about the otter taking bites of surfboards and terrorizing surfers to give up their boards so she can catch some waves. But her repetitive, aggressive behavior brought concern to fish and wildlife. Its goal now is to capture her and get her checked out at Monterey Bay Aquarium by professionals and prevent anyone from getting hurt. In this four-page letter, complete with footnotes, Brevard County Republicans cite sources which led them to a stunning conclusion. Here it is in their own words. Government agencies, media and tech companies, and other corporations have committed enormous fraud by claiming COVID-19 injections are safe and effective. 
Strong and credible evidence has recently been revealed that COVID-19 and COVID-19 injections are biological and technological weapons. If approved, this letter will be sent to Tallahassee at a time when a grand jury requested by Governor DeSantis is investigating those very same vaccines. That grand jury's job is to determine whether pharmaceutical giants who brought the mRNA vaccines to market broke any laws and should face charges. It's already illegal to require anyone to get the COVID vaccine in Florida, but if state leaders go along with Brevard's request, no one in Florida would be allowed to get those vaccines. wanted to have a dog of my own. The search to purchase a cute corgi led Alyssa Brown to this website. This one was like the fourth one down on Google. And they were substantially cheaper than all of the rest of them, which I guess should have been a red flag for me. She says she requested information and was provided details, including pictures of the pup, along with a description of how the purchasing and transportation would work. When the 19-year-old said she wanted it, the scammer told her he needed cash before sending it. There wasn't any like, this is exactly where you're going to pick it up. It was pick it up at the San Antonio airport at 10 o'clock. After Alyssa paid $800, she received this bogus tracking number, followed by a request to rent a thermal electronic crate for about $1,500. That's when she got the feeling she was being swindled. I called the airport and they were like, they're gonna have to give you some sort of information about like, where that's at. So I'm just calling them and nobody answered. The Better Business Bureau says this kind of scheme is happening more and more in San Antonio. Well, listen to this. Netflix has ended its cheapest streaming plan, the one without ads in both the U.S. and the United Kingdom. The basic plan set at $9.99 in the U.S. was discontinued for new or rejoining subscribers. However, if you currently are a paying customer on that plan, you can keep it until you change options or cancel your account at some point. That's going to do it for us right now. But don't forget to join me tonight for the evening edition of the National Desk. You want to check your local listings for the exact time. I'm Eugene Ramirez. Thanks for watching.